All right, hey Alex, how's it going? So you're Platinum 3 Yon player, and you're playing Yon versus Rengar. It's a pretty hard matchup, I won't lie. Ignite Rengar top is pretty annoying to verse, but let's let's have a look. Okay, actually quickly, where did I put that? You said some stuff about tilt, so let me address that first. Let me just find it. I did have it, but I've... Uh... So you said, um, you're in one trick, you, wanna, you don't have anything specific, you don't know anything else. Okay, so you get really tilted and games feel unplayable after I start tilting. Okay, so first off, um, I'll talk with my experience tilting. So I think that for me, tilt is definitely something that builds up over multiple games. I'd be curious to see if that's like the same for you. Like for me, I think if stuff happens during one game, it's kind of like whatever, but it's more like if, if bad stuff happens one game and then it happens the next game and the next game, that's when I start getting really tilted. So for me, um, I play with chat off, like chat completely off. I actually have all chat on, but I have team chat off because I find team chat to be way more toxic. Um, so that could be something that you find if you feel like you're tilted more about what your teammates say rather than what they do. But, you know, that just could be like up to you, really. Uh, another thing is that I always take like a five minute break after I lose a game. Like a five minute break is in. I don't even click the queue up button for five minutes after. Um, I don't watch the replay until five minutes after. I just like try and completely mentally reset. Um, as for like resetting during the game, I think that's a lot more difficult if you find that like something in the game happens that sets you off like and it's not from like stuff earlier in the day it's just like purely something happens and it's like flipping a switch and you get really tilted i think the best remedy for that would be honestly maybe just focusing on something other than winning the game at that point like okay it may be in your head like you get really tilted and the game feels unwinnable but you could still try play really well like at that point i would say just like it's gonna sound weird but don't even worry about winning the game anymore just focus on making sure your performance is good and a lot of the time i think that will just lead to you winning the game anyway um but that would be my kind of uh suggestions i think yeah, I don't know. Definitely get back to me about whether or not you feel like it's something that happens over multiple games or it's just like resetting during one isolated game because I think that's very, very different. Uh, but yeah, I think like turn chat off, take some breaks and try like focus on your own performance. But I feel like that, I don't know, maybe it's not like helpful enough. Um, I guess like another thing you could do is you could try just like, I don't know, deep breaths or something like that. Personally, I've, that's never really been a thing for me, but just some ideas. Um, I, I have to make a full video about it sometime. Uh, yeah, let's get into the game. You said you don't have anything specific, but anyway, let's just go have a look. So you're playing Yon vs. Rengar. Uh, this is going to be, it's a rough matchup. There's, there's no doubt about it. Um, now let's see. Let's see how this goes. So you have lethal tempo, I'm assuming. Um, yep, okay. Okay, actually, one thing I just noticed right here straight away is you don't have bone plating. I'm not sure what you've taken. Um, I'm guessing you have like um, one of the two scaling ones, Overgrowth and Conditioning. I think like th those are really good on your own, obviously, but I think when you're against a champ like Rengar, Bone Plating would give you the opportunity to like every 90 seconds essentially take one good trade and it kind of allows you to buy yourself a bit more space in the lane. I think like going full scaling runes against like such an early strong like lane bully like Rengar, it's going to be rough. Like that's just kind of the way it goes. Um, but I like what you're doing with the wave. You're like basically just letting the wave come to you. I think that's kind of what you have to do. Um, you can't really contest Rengar for this. I think um, this is something that, again, it's like if you had bone plating. Um, why is this so slow? Okay. If you had bone plating, like these trades wouldn't go as badly for you. But in general, I think you just can't really walk up to this lane level, um, to this wave level one. But I think that's something that you could realize like on your own. Just like Rengar's level one is so strong. And you just want to like wait for the wave to kind of come to you. Um, it does sort of suck that you've lost so much HP already because that means that when you actually are like starting to be able to farm more at that like level 2 and level 3 mark, um, you've already lost quite a bit of HP, right? Like you lost your potion um, and yeah, you lost like a big chunk of your HP. You can't really CS any of these. Um, I actually wonder if it would have been better to start W in this matchup. I feel like... No, probably not, because then you can't do anything if he jumps on you. So I guess the Q start's probably good. Um, if you can freeze this wave here, it'd be really nice. So you can keep it like, okay, th yeah, this is really good. So I like your wave control. This is like optimal for you. Um, so now from this point, like you're down quite a bit of CS, right? But from this point, like you should have a much easier time. Like you've got the wave um, directly outside your tower. Um, and you have like the skills necessary to where you can just like keep farming them. So um, I, like, I like what you've done so far. I think... Yeah, like that CS you just missed, not a huge deal. Get all these. Yeah, I mean, you're in a really good spot now and you have your E. Okay, you E forward, I... Hmm. I don't really like the E forward just for like an auto Q. Actually, it was just a Q. I think that like, 
your E is such a long cooldown, and in, in a lane where you've got to play more defensively, you can use your E either to get some actually winning trades. Like, so for example, normally as your own right, like you'd look to punish the enemy cooldowns, but Rango is one of those champs that just doesn't really have them, like pretty much. Um, so in this matchup, the way that you can win trades is either you can, um, you could probably win a trade with like an E and then like a Q2 knockup and like looking for some trades and then going back, or you could just use your E to farm. But I think using your E for just like a tiny little bit of damage like this, it's, it's really not worth it. It's a long cooldown investment um, for basically not very much. Now you could have got that creep, I think, uh, if you, if you, uh, use your Q a little better, but not a huge deal. You missed that one. Can you get this one? Okay, so this is kind of a scarier point in the lane. I think if this Rengar were good, you would let it push back out, and then you'd need to call your jungler, so that would be much scarier. So this is kind of the point where you'd really want your E up uh, for that sort of thing. But fortunately, he's pushing it back to you, which means you are going to be able to uh, continue to get the CS. Well, let's see. So you've got Zac near you, so you can maybe look for a gank. Okay, yeah, he jumps on you. I think you actually walked a bit too far back here. Let's see. Do you have Zach next to you? I actually think, okay, if you were, like, really big-brained, I think when Zach's, like, in this bush right now, you should actually walk up and, and bait Rengar onto you. Um, it could be a bit scary, but I think, like, that would mean Zach could gank instantly. I think once he sees Rengar, he does... Okay, yeah, so I like what you did there. I think you could have done a tiny bit earlier, but not a big deal. I think here you... How do you do this? I, th I actually think that in this situation, when Rengar jumps on you, rather than walking down, I think you actually E upwards and then Q downwards. And that kind of locks him here. Um, and it also means that you get positioned close to Zach. Because like what actually happens here is that like I think if you if you E here and Q here, he can't actually really get that much damage on you because he's going to be CC, right? Um, but instead, you take a ton of damage walking away. Though you do get the knockout back onto him. But now you're sort of like, you don't have much of your E duration left. Um, so I think, like, you could have set this gank up a little bit better. Wow, that guy flashes in the book. He is an actual psycho for that. Nice flash, though. Nice flash. I guess Zach can kill this guy. No way he gets that, right? Hopefully Zach can kill that guy. Okay, Zach gets him. So I think you could have played the gank a little bit cleaner, but I think either way, you probably are using your flash. So, um, I don't think it would have made a huge deal. Basically, you're just going to want to push this out and make sure, uh, make sure you get as many of the creeps as possible and then look for a reset okay so you're in a really good spot now i'd say rango used his flash i didn't check if he used ignite but um i think you're in a really really good spot could you have bought any other items Ooh, i'm actually thinking here i i wonder if it's better to buy two daggers rather than boots here my, my only reason would be that like normally in mid right like you're chasing or I guess top as well, but normally you're like chasing people down, right? Um, you're dodging skill shots and stuff like that, but Rengar plays very, very differently, and I actually think probably would have been better to have more attack speed just for when this guy goes on you, just so you can trade back a bit harder. Um, again, I don't think it really makes a difference either way, but it could be a slight optimization. So this is good for you. Again, uh, you've got the wave nice and frozen outside your tower, and you've saved TP, so you're in a really, really good spot. Um, I think you're being a bit too safe here. I think you should definitely be able to get this creep with W. Um, I don't think Rengar can just like, there's like no way he can he can kill you here or chunk you out enough. One thing that you should consider is because you know that you have a TP advantage and you're full HP and you've got refillable, you've got this like huge HP advantage. Essentially, you've got two health bars here um, and you can use some of that health to make sure you stay up in CS. Like right here, you're giving CS to maintain high HP, but it's like, what do you need that high HP for? Especially when you've got a TP. So here, I'd much prefer that you get more CS and lose a bit of HP than kind of like play super safe uh, and give up all the CS. So this is going to crash on your tower. I think you should make a big effort to freeze this. I think you, I, I honestly, I think like before, one thing you could have done is you actually could have E'd and tried to pull the wave up, or you could have stood right here and like W'd the wave. Again, you can afford to take quite a bit of HP damage because you have like refillable pot, because you have a TP with a second health bar. So I think this is like, you're going to collect all the farm, right? But this, after this like wave crashes and pushes back out, it's going to be much more favorable for Rengar again. So um, I think sacrificing some HP to maintain a good wave state is much more worth it. I also think um, this is like pretty poor CSing. I don't really like bringing up CSing normally because like, I don't know, I feel like it's just, it's easy for you to work on, right? But I think uh, you've consistently missed quite a lot of CS just for not really much reason like if you're missing cs because you're contested by rengar i understand that um but i'd say i'd estimate you've missed about 10 for pretty much no reason so i think 
definitely like working on your CSing, like just pure like right clicking CSing and could could be good as well. Um, what one thing I'll also say is that like the more CS you can get without using your cooldowns, the harder it is going to be uh, for Rengar to punish you. So for example, like here, um, you use your Q and now Rengar is going to jump on you, right? So like he wouldn't have done this if you had kept your Q. If you'd been able to set them up just with auto attacks, you would give Rengar less windows to punish you. Um, and also you use your W and I don't know if that hit Rengar or not. Uh, I'm not sure if you can get all that CS without using spells, but it might be that you can like Q from the bot side instead. But basically I think that um, you should be a bit more mindful about how you're using your cooldowns because those are going to be the windows that people look to punish you. Um, and in general, uh, you, you can get a lot more CS if you just like focus on your right clicking. This is another CS that I don't think you should give up. I think um, you can, let's see, where did you use your W? Like, okay, if you had saved this W here, like you got no CS with that W, you would have been able to W this. Another alternative is you could just E forward and get this. Um, yeah, I think that uh, maybe you could have just got this with your Q, to be honest. Um, but I think you're giving up a lot of CS for not much reason. There's another one. Um, I I'm not sure like what what your reasoning is for this. Like, I'm not sure if you're just like not really paying attention to the creeps. Like, maybe you're focusing too much on Rengar, or maybe you feel like you have to keep your cooldowns. I'm not sure, but I feel like there's been a lot of CS. Uh, that has been relatively uncontested. And when you're playing a scaling champion like Yorn, it's, it's super, super important that you, you keep high CS. You've got Alistair near you here. Um, I actually think if you're, a, if you're a Giga Chad here, you can tell this guy is scared, right? I think you could actually stand in front of this creep in front of this cannon and block his bowler. I don't think you're you're worried about getting hit by it. You know you've got Alistair near you and he's not standing near a bush. Like he can't run at you. So I think you could have denied about what it's like 60 or 70 gold just by standing in front of this here. You can even E in front of it if you were more scared, but I think you could have denied that. So is going back in the bush. I think like now you're at the point where he's level five and you're level you're level six yeah okay so you're level six he's level five so you actually probably win the trade right now and again another thing is that as long as you don't die you have like an extra hp bar because you've got um you've got tp i'd quite like to see you look for some like e or q2 trades like i think this guy going on you here i think you can i think you're playing this too scared i think um you've got this guy next to you you can just like let's see do you have one stack or you have two stacks Okay, I think this guy jumps on you right now. You can just instantly E and start full fighting him. And, and uh, what's his name? Alistair will get here in time. I think here again, like you could E, Q, and then Alt down. I think you were just like way too scared here. Uh, I'm not... I feel like... I understand why you're scared. Like Ignite Rengar with Alt is pretty scary. But I think like you should, should realize like how strong your extended trades are. And you know that he can't burst you. Um, and he also can't really like chase you all the way down because you've got this this Alistair next to you. So I think you could definitely like um, trade a little bit harder than you are. And I think in general you are giving a bit too much respect. It also would help if like if you had the bone plating right because that means like every 90 seconds you get one trade. It's really good for you. I think this is also way too too passive. I think you you can definitely walk up and W this creep. Oh well, actually you just kind of missed it. You could definitely E as well. I think you can just E. E towards here like make sure that your E is out of his range E up here and then you can probably get all three of these creeps uh, without really losing anything for it although actually maybe you're going to get them all because he's just pushing it in um, but I think he probably could have denied you looks like you're going to are you going to cancel this? I feel like you should cancel this okay well he cancels for you I'm not sure if you would have looked for this base anyway but I think you're not really under threat of being dived so I wouldn't go for the base here I would just like wait a bit longer I think if you get a bit lower you could you could look or if you have like a like you get boots here no matter what so I mean you could base but I think it'd be better to wait okay hmm yeah this is kind of interesting I feel like this is honestly a bit unlucky I mean, both of those creeps have one HP. I won't penalize you too hard for that. That was a bit unlucky. Um, you can, you should W this creep up here. You should be more willing to use your W for for CS. I think some of the time you do it. Okay, like th this is good. Okay, like when this happens, like you you have this is your ideal scenario. So when you have Q two and E, like he he should get shit on in the trade. He should take like a ton of damage. I think you should have extended that trade more. Like what happened here is that you have like your perfect window, right? And he he should take like quite a bit of damage here um and worst case like if he decides to trade back onto you he can't kill you from half hp and then you can tp back but instead like you invested all your cooldowns and you didn't really take the full trade um so now you kind of just like get chunked for free and and you don't really have 
anything to show for it. So you kind of have to miss this cannon, I guess, because you're basing. Um, get the shield bow. You should buy another dagger here. You get one. Yeah, nice. Okay, this could be a kill, I think. You have our... I think when your E comes up, you could look... Oh, wow. Okay, you just went straight in. Do you get this? Okay, yeah, really nice. Really nice. You get the kill. That was honestly really good limit. Uh, like, or like, what's it called? Like, knowing your limits. That was really impressive. I actually wouldn't have altered him straight away, so I, I guess you definitely knew that better than I did. That was a good kill, and it's definitely going to put you in a really, really good spot. Uh, you can shove this all the way in. Probably get a tower plate off it as well. So you get the tower plate and base. That's really good. You come back to lane, you've got the zeal. Okay, so you're really, really strong right now. You should definitely be looking to trade with him like you saw. How much damage you can do in that last trade so i hope that you play like really really aggressively here um i think basically whenever you have q2 and e you can just trade with this guy yep okay see i think this is like more like what you should have been doing earlier like you can see the, the trades are pretty good for you especially when you have the sustain advantage and especially before when you had the tp as well um like that was even without all okay so what happened here you have zach sort of nearby um, I think you don't need to flash so early. I actually think you don't need to flash at all. Like, you flash early to try and make this happen, right? But I think I think this Rengar might be dead, no matter what. I guess if he leaves right now, like, he's not dead, right? Like, if he, he just walks out, but I'm not sure he's going to. And I think once you kind of, like, flash in like that, you sort of do um, reveal the gank a bit. But we'll see. Maybe Zach can still can still get it off. You should be a lot higher HP now, yeah. Okay, so this guy stayed. Um, so I think he definitely would have stayed even if you hadn't flashed. So I think you kind of didn't need to waste that. You just needed to um to wait. Also, did you ever buy a pink ward? I don't know if you did, but if you could have got a pink ward down, it would be much easier for you to um to help set up this gank because you would know that he didn't have a ward. Um, yeah. So you, you get this kill. You're in a really really good spot. Have this in. This guy heralds for you. Get a lot of gold. Now what happened here? You got your base stopped or something? Oh, you just walked all the way back. This is sort of bad, I think. You probably miss a lot of this wave, or maybe you don't. Let's see, maybe Rengo doesn't push it in time. Oh, I see. Nocturne didn't push it. I think what should happen here is you should base a bit more aggressively. You should base probably in this bush. Um, because the problem is if you if you walk all the way back here and then Nocturne decides to just shove the next wave, you just miss this whole next creep wave um, for no reason. Which would be sort of bad. Well, actually, it would be like quite bad. Um, but instead, like he doesn't, then Rengar comes to catch it, and Rengar's wave clear is quite slow. Get the all in this guy. I think, yeah, now you're definitely strong enough that you can do this. Um, I mean, you probably just destroy him, right? Oh, I think... I think you should have... You could either E, R, but it like makes it a bit more obvious. You could R and then just instantly E above him. Like, you could just E this way. Um, that way his only way out is really to go down because I think that would be a lot of extra damage like you obviously you kill him if you hit the Q here but also I think you would kill him if you do down all those auto attacks with your E on it um you still get him I think if you'd hit that maybe you would have killed him pretty close you shove this all the way in you get this tower I like that you're denying some CS should definitely push another one here you don't have shield bow yet this is good very close, very close. Where did you place your wards? Let me get back a bit. I actually have... Okay, so don't... In my opinion, don't go blue trinket on Yon. I think, like, if you're playing a side lane champion, you generally want yellow ward because it's gonna... It's gonna enable you to, like, play more aggressively in the side lane because you can create your own vision. If you have blue ward, it, it doesn't... It's more for, like, checking Baron and stuff. It's it's not really um, gonna help you at all as a side laner because, like, if you look, like, right here, right? You, you're in the side lane and, like, you can play really aggressive, but you also have no vision in the top side at all. And you should be able to give yourself vision if you have like one pink ward and one yellow ward. Um, but instead you're like basically completely in the dark. And actually it's pretty it's pretty scary for you to play aggressively here because like your entire team is bot side and you have no vision of top side. I think like I mean if you know where they are, because like maybe in the game you knew um that they weren't here. I didn't really look at the map that closely, but I think it's like generally a pretty scary situation to be in. Okay, now you see them bot side. Actually, no, there was a nocturne, so like you you probably should have died. Uh, one of these times this is good pushes back to you um yeah don't I'm not really a fan of this honestly 
Let's see, do you get anything on? Okay, the reason I'm not a fan of this is because uh, the objective is already dead, and you're going to this with, with like, I don't know, you're just like running down the map for kind of no real reason. I think if you have TP, it would be fine to TP to this, but I think the chances are that you kind of like get to this fight really late, and this could be an opportunity for you to like really mega snowball yourself. So, let's see how you play the fight. Uh, you do get the ER on Ezreal, so you did play that pretty well. You missed one Q. I was very close to killing him. You get missing pinged, but I don't think this is really your fault at all. I think this was more a macro problem. Oh my god, they're all so low. That's really depressing. Karthus gets a kill, but I think what it would have been better for you to do here anyway is like out of base. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like a really big time investment to run down here, and I think it would have been better just to like run to these wolves and then run to top lane and pressure this really hard. I think you could have built a really big 1v1 lead. I mean, to be honest, if you had played it a little bit better, it would have worked out, but I think it was also like it was sort of lucky for you that the fight went this way anyway. Like, they could have just disengaged when they saw you, but they didn't. And you also died, so you lost like quite a lot here in, in terms of like what you could have gotten during this time. So you walk back top, I really think you should take this Gromp on the way. Um, that wave is pushing to you, so you don't need to be quite there yet. And you can get an extra 4 CS if you quickly grab that Gromp on the way to lane. Um, you push this in. Again, you have your blue ward, so it's really hard for you to create vision for yourself. So you're just going to kind of have to play like really Chad. You need to push this wave. Let's see. So you see them all on mid at the moment. We see Rangar's bot. We see Yumi Swain mid. Ezreal's mid as well. So you know that the only person here is... I guess whoever their jungler is. Who's the jungler again? I can't really remember. But you don't need to be scared here. I don't think anyway. They would have used all their cooldowns on mid. And I think you should push... I th yeah, I think this was way too respectful. I think it'd be a lot easier for you if you had your um your yellow ward. But I think what should have happened here is you you push this next wave. It is really important that you push these waves all the way into the tower because it gives you more time. Um, and it also means that it crashes under the tower and pushes back to you, which means it's, you're going to be able to farm it sooner. And also, you probably could have taken these Krugs. Like, I think you can 1v2 Ezreal Yumi. I don't think you need to be scared of them at all. So you miss, I'm going to say, like... It looks like not much, but I think you actually missed probably about 20 CS off this because like they're gonna the wave's gonna crash out of tower, you don't get to farm Krugs, the wave's not gonna build up and push back to you. Um like it's gonna it's just gonna regularly push back to you, but it's not gonna be like a huge wave. Again, you should be taking this grump on the way. If no one has taken it, that that's like another four CS. Like if you'd taken it the first time, maybe it would have respawned by now as well. I see pushes in. Again, I think this is this is a bit too... I understand kind of why you did this. Because it, it like looks a little scary up here. But I think I think after you see them on your blue ward. That you can probably just push... Yeah, I'm trying to look at the map. You, got, you can see it, right? You can... I think you can push this wave in all the way again. And that would create more pressure. And then you can run down a herald. Because I think like if you look at this right now. Like you're hitting herald. Um, but during this time, top wave doesn't really create any pressure for you because, like, they don't actually have to CS it. And also, you're losing this entire wave up here while your creeps are killing it. Uh, so that's, like, a really, really big problem. You're losing, like, a lot of CS for that. So you TP bot. Um, yeah, I don't really like this either. I think, like, it's fine to TP bot, right? But you want to TP bot when your wave's in a good state. And right now, your wave's actually in a really bad state. Um, and also your jungler's top side, like you're TPing away from your jungler and away from your mid laner. Like this can maybe go well, but in my opinion, you don't have enough information to make this play. And I think also if you didn't TP to this, this is like push this wave in, push the next wave, like Krug's red. There's like a lot of CS you get here for free. And um, this is an unnecessary risk, I think. So let, let's see how it goes, because to be honest, we couldn't even tell from the map. You get the ult here. You do take out the Nocturne, although you don't get the kill. Uh, so you're kind of in the middle of everything now. You get this guy? You do get that guy. I mean, did you get one or two kills out of this? You got a kill. So, like, it's fine, but I think it could have been a lot better if you had just pushed top. Um, and now you're down flash, TP, and R. So you invest a lot of resources for relatively little. Uh, and and I think you would have got a lot more if you, if you didn't do that. I think also here... Did your mid have TP? Okay, so here... You're definitely walking to the wrong side of the map. Your Cassio is going to this top wave. Your Karthus is going to this mid wave, which means you walk bot here. You need to come bot, take these Krugs, push Rengar all the way in and take the Gromp. Uh, instead, you're walking to the wrong side of the map. Like, yeah, see, so like, you've, you've kind of walked to top. 
I like that you're taking the Raptors, that's good. Um, yeah, actually, no, I like taking the Raptors. I think you could have come bot side sooner, probably taking these Krugs. Uh, and you maybe could have pushed this bot wave just one more. I don't think you could get it all the way in when Nocturne's on the side of the map. Um, but you definitely could have... Well, either way, you could have been here sooner and you, like, wasted time. You realize late that you're going top. So, let's see how this fight goes. I think you're really, really strong here, so you could get, a like, a ton of damage off. What happened here? Did he spell shield your R? Oh, yeah, so you got the R spell shield off. Um, I think you can just hit Swain. I still, I th still think that's fine. Like, maybe you could have played it a little bit better, but honestly, this is still really good. You're in the right position and everything, so... Yeah, I like that fight. Um, now you take take this drag and should go bot, in my opinion. So you're going mid. Hmm. Okay, like, if you're Zach's not going to farm mid, then you should go mid. But honestly, I think Zach should farm this and you should farm that bot wave. Instead, you guys are, like, sharing gold and XP and doesn't really, like, do anything for you. You get a kill, I guess. Oh, but you die for it. So that was another bad decision. I think generally, like... Like, you really want to be side laning a lot more than you are right now. This could be, like, a, a bot wave into, like, Gromp and Blue Angle, or even, like, a bot wave into base. Instead, you come in, you get another kill, but it's it's just another, like, this could have been a lot, lot better for you, and instead it just, it, it, I mean, it turned out okay, right? But it's just, like, it's not really good either. So, okay, now you're passing bot out of base. I like this. You should run to these Krugs. I think you're kind of wasting your time running all the way to this fight. Why don't you do come here? Did you get... Okay, I mean, you got a double kill off it. I mean, I don't mind it that much, I guess, because you are going to be able to collect this bot wave anyway. I'm just trying to see, like, is this reasonable to assume that you can get these? I mean, yeah, actually, I think you're probably right here. Like, you can get to this bot wave before it crashes anyway, so you can come have a look at this fight. I actually like the decision you made here, as long as you go back and farm everything afterwards. So... You found the raptors. I think you should farm. I think you should have gone raptors, krugs, then bot wave. Instead, you've gone raptors, bot wave, and now you can't really go krugs without walking back. I guess Carthus is going to take the krugs, but I think those probably could have been yours. Um, so you're pushing this bot wave. Uh, and I think you could push further as well. I think you. This would be where you'd like want a yellow ward up there. Um, taking the gromp is good. This is this is much more what I like to see, and I think you can. Is this up? No, it's not. I think you could probably actually. No, I don't think you can push another wave because your jungler is basing and Nocturne was just there. But you got it all the way in anyway. That's pretty good. You got the base off and you're running bot back out of base. I like that. So your side landing now is is definitely doing well. Push this all the way in. Oh, your team was on Baron. I didn't even notice. Um, you, here you should just. Oh yeah, until you yeah okay. So they knocked an altered. I like the TP. I think this is good. Like you can you can get a really big flank here, and you already got the bot wave like pushed basically all the way in. I think that's good. You get a huge flank here. Very nice. Really nice. Ooh. Did you need to flash for this guy? Let's see. I actually think if you just run at him, you would probably catch him. I don't think you needed to flash for that. So that kind of I mean that's just like a small mechanical error. You come top, you're gonna grab this whole wave. Because your team's staying on the map, you should stay on the map as well. I think you should... Well, you can get red, but you can come back and hit this tower. Can you base? I'm going to drag. That's fine. You got the wave all the way in. Take these raptors, I think. Or share them with Carthus or whatever. Here you want to play two lanes with Baron. How does your team suddenly get into a fight? I don't think there's much you can do to be there that quicker. That much quicker. I think... Here, you, you should actually walk up further on the mid wave and try and catch this further up and then move over. The reason is, like, if you move to this fight here while the wave is dead or, like, just, like, dead even, even if you win this fight, afterwards you have to walk all the way back and then push. That gives them time to respawn and kind of just, like, heal up and stuff. But I think if you just, like, after this, like, you're not really scared, right? Like, you can just push up the mid wave and then walk aggressively through the jungle. Like, you're, you're so strong, right? I think you should have just, like, you can even just, like, pull the midwave up here if you don't have time to kill it. But just making sure it doesn't, like, just end up dead, kind of, like, in the middle here. You do a ton of damage. That guy gets really low. You take these wolves. So that's really nice. Now you have to come back to this dead wave. So, actually, if you like, guys, look at your waves. Like, your bot wave sucks and your top wave sucks. So, this is going to make it much harder for you to pressure with Baron because, like, 
no one managed to side waves basically and like your mid wave was a little bit delayed i think you just keep going here let's see you don't really need to be scared of anyone here i think you could have kept hitting that tower honestly but i don't mind you really waiting i like this as well you get swain's ult for free you get zonya's nice usage of your uh, e there and you have a lot of sustain you're just gonna kite it out okay all good how did this happen get that kill Okay, so you base, I think here, you have TP in a minute, so you can definitely pressure a side lane. I think you probably run bot. I think you run straight to the Krugs here. See what you do. You're watching mid with your TP. I think you should take these Krugs right now, so you're walking past them, so you can walk straight to the fight. Um, but I don't think it's good. I think it would be much better for you just to take the Krugs and then push bot wave. Good stack on this. Yeah, this fight already seems like sort of i mean actually well okay you kind of smurfed it to be honest but do you get any kills there's a big ult though okay you die so like i don't know i feel like in general you you're taking i don't want to say like low percentage it's just like okay it's like if you come to this fight it might go well right based on how you play and how your teammates play but if you if you take the krugs and then walk to this fight it's just like higher percentage overall and you don't really lose much time for it um yeah and you ended up dying so you lost quite a bit here i'm not i'm definitely not saying like don't go to fights and stuff because like if you're really strong like you are now like you definitely want to get involved in fights right uh, but you just want to take the fights that are actually good for you and making sure you get enough cs like while that's going on because like if you look what you lost for this it's like you died uh you did get one kill but you lost you essentially lost krugs lost the spot wave you maybe lost red depending on who's getting it and you also probably could have got that bot crab so i would say like in terms of gold swing because they got a kill on you as well and it was a seven like 650 gold shutdown this was probably close to like a 1 to 1.5k gold swing like for the enemy team basically just because you ran to a fight that wasn't super good and like you, you didn't really need to go to it anyway the carthus is bot you kind of have no choice but to just push mid so that's that's fine um okay here this is something that i think you should be kind of careful about so it's really really important that someone's catching this mid wave straight away so like if you're not going side lane like i think it would have been better for Karthus to like i don't know it's better for Karthus to be mid and you to be bot but like because Karthus was already bot you kind of have to be here um but you need to pay really close attention to this mid wave because whoever catches the mid wave gets like um the ability to kind of make a play with it sooner so right now like the mid wave is just dead in the middle and no one's firing it so like if you it kind of ended up that you were in the position to where you were the one clearing mid waves and again this wave is just like completely dead so yeah you can't really create any pressure with it and you're just like a ramming basically or it's not an a ram but like you guys are just like fighting kind of for the sake of it and there's not really like any um there's not really like any macro play and and you guys like are sharing a lot of cs and xp so it's kind of like causing you guys to fall behind a little bit i think you probably didn't need to invest your flash here i think you could just like e run and like cut them off with q here I think you should value your flash a little bit higher because like you can definitely do a lot more with it and you've kind of not done that much with it so you push this all the way in um let's see you guys gonna look for the end okay yeah really nice play out of you here you stack q on this you engage get the r on ezreal you do a ton of damage here that was really nicely played by you so that looks like it is basically it's okay so i think um from this game i'll like write some write some stuff down for you i think your yon uh, mechanics i think are quite good there's a few times where you like miss cues and stuff right but i think for the most part like you know what to do with your abilities uh, i actually really liked your wave control early but i think like uh well, let's talk about the early game first so i think in the early game um you you gave up uh, gave up like way too way too much cs um gave up too much cs and i think like you you in general like had a bad or like a poor um you need, need a better understanding of like of of how to how to get 
I don't know, like you're in a losing matchup, right? So I understand why you're giving up CS, but you need to get a better understanding of like what you can do to get that CS. Like you don't just want to give up as much CS as you were. So like you can use all your abilities, you can to do it. You can trade some HP to get it. Um, you can realize that when you have like your Q2 and E that you're like really strong and you can kind of like create a window of like breathing room for yourself. So like, I guess like, um, also, yeah, like creating some breathing room for yourself, for yourself. Uh, trading hp for cs this is another thing because i think if you had taken bone plating uh, you also could have used that to trade to trade like a little bit better and get a little bit more cs i think you gave up a lot of cs that you didn't really need to um also in the early game i think let's see what else was there i'm trying to remember i think you did most of the stuff well in the early game i think you maybe could have recognized um maybe like recognized recognized how strong strong you were a bit earlier like i think there was a time where about level it was like it was like somewhere here where you were you were getting ganked by the alistar and you were like really really scared um and you didn't really need to be let me just see if i can find it for you really quick i think it was like here when alistar walked up i think here uh you definitely should have played yeah yeah it was here like you you played this way too way too scared could have played uh, a lot more aggressively there but i think as a whole like your early game was pretty decent other than how much cs you gave up um but like you played like defensive laning pretty well and like you didn't die or anything so i think for the most part like your early game was was pretty decent uh i think the mid game is where you played pretty badly so i think um you need to value like waves and camps like a lot lot higher than you are so there's like a lot of times where you're skipping camps there's a lot of times where you're not pushing waves like as far in as you should uh, and that's causing you to fall behind like on cs quite a lot more i think also you should um you should just like play for the side lane like quite a bit more it's going to give you a lot more like gold a lot more solo xp and make you a lot stronger um you shouldn't just i guess you need to like ev actually evaluate fights like right now i feel like you're kind of just like running to every fight that happens uh, but you do actually need to just like you need to get a better feeling for what fights are actually worth going to and what fights aren't there were some times where you went to a fight and it went sort of well or i remember that time where you like tp bot and it went decent right but a lot of these times you could have taken like a huge amount of gold in in cs in camps um in turrets you know stuff like that so there was like a lot of gold and your, your side laning needed to be improved a lot i also think a uh, yellow ward um will make make your side laning quite a bit easier uh, what else was there i feel like um maybe a little bit like your um walking to the correct lane out of base i think this was this was like mostly good but there were a couple times i think where you where you kind of walked uh to the to the wrong lane out of base and that and that sort of like wasted a bit of time like there was this time here where i think you didn't really need to come to this fight there was the other one where like you like walked top and then like sort of came mid for a bit um i think i also this is like playing for, with the side lane and camps but i think like um push wave in all the way like if you can it's like really really important that you get the wave all the way in because it gives you extra access to like their jungle camps also denies them a huge wave obviously you do need to be careful right because like if you play more aggressively in the side lane there's a higher chance you die but yon's like really good at 1v1ing really good at 1v2ing and if you had a yellow ward it would make it a lot easier for yourself i think in the team fights you actually play like like pretty well i was like pretty impressed with your team fighting i think for the most part you hit like very high value targets you had good alts um so i don't think there were any real problems with that um was there anything else i think maybe you could think about just in general like creating a bit more value with your tp i think like do i just hit the mic no um like this tp and stuff were good but i think yeah like um create more value with tp so like some of your tps were good i think this tp was quite good but there were some times where you just like I remember you TP'd bot and it was like sort of bad. Um, I think you TP'd, actually I can't remember the other ones, but like to be honest, there's a lot of times where TP allows you to like pressure the side lane as much as you want and then still TP to the fight. But sometimes you're just like using your TP too early and that's meaning that you kind of like have to play with your team quite a bit more. I think in general, like you've got to be way more selfish than you are right now because you're playing this like hyper scaling champion and your cs is just like it's not that high you know like i think it's acceptable to definitely give up some cs in the lane phase because you were versus rengar like you could have got more but you had to give up some either way uh, but definitely in the mid game you missed a lot of cs that you shouldn't have um 
yeah, I guess you did actually just miss some from right clicking, but I think really your side laning was was kind of the biggest issue. I think um this is another thing like uh, valuing waves in camps. It's really important also that you um you push waves before fighting. Like that's really important. There's a really big difference between if you win a fight and your waves are pushed you get a lot of it they lose cs they lose objectives but if you win a fight and the waves are not pushed they actually don't lose that much of it they lose obviously um gold like or you get gold when they die but for the most part they can get back and farm the waves in time so that's, that's like really important um but yeah i think that was pretty much it so i'll send this all to you like on the the fiber thing or you can just like screenshot i'll just make sure my cam's not blocking it because i accidentally did that in the last time um but so how i recommend you kind of work on these things i think for you uh the biggest thing to work on is your your side laning in general i think you need to have like um like side laning, farming and maybe like evaluating fights so i think i think these are the three biggest things i, I really want to see more games from you where you have like a you have much higher cs you're you're much higher level than your opponents um yeah and just in general like play a bit less a rammy uh fight a little bit less than you are and just like super snowball yourself i think the best ways you can do this are like you can in in a game you can just like try and keep in your mind like what camps you can farm like how far you can push your waves um evaluating fights is actually like quite a hard skill i think this is a skill that even like challenger players struggle with but i think like it'll just come with a bit more experience and you should just i guess like it'd be easier to put it into perspective like think if you don't go to this fight what do i get so if you realize that by not going to this fight you get like three waves a camp and a tower like it's probably worth going for that right on the other hand if you realize that like by going to this fight you only miss like one wave well then you can probably just run on the fight so i think those are probably the easiest ways to work on those um so yeah i think that was pretty much it uh, if that helped you kind of like yeah i mean just like let me know if it was useful i guess and let me know if you have any more questions uh you can just like reply to me on fiverr reply to me on discord or, or wherever basically uh, but yeah hopefully it was helpful for you and uh good luck in your games